What's up everyone? This is Dariusz Kolbaczyk, co-founder of MG Poland, JS Poland, AngularMaster.dev and WorkshopFest.dev. Welcome back to Angular Master Podcast. Today, together with Manfred Steja, who is an excellent speaker, trainer, consultant and author with Focus on Angular, we will talk about standalone components. Hi Manfred, how are you? Hi Darek, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Today we met to talk about a hot topic lately, standalone components. But before we get to the questions, please tell us about the webinar you are preparing now. Yeah, totally. So in this webinar, I want to start with telling you about the basics about what standalone components are about and how they make NG modules optional. But then we are proceeding with the main topic, something you don't find in the manual. Namely, I'm going to answer the question, how does this all influence our architectures? How can we structure our Angular application without NG modules, which are about structuring an Angular application? And you will be surprised. There are several good approaches or uh, even better approaches compared to NG modules for structuring everything. So we warmly invite all listeners to this webinar on May 10. Registration link is angulamaster.dev slash webinars. You can also find the link in the description of this podcast. Okay, let's get to the questions. Originally, the idea was to not implement ng modules for Angular 2, uh, as it was called back then. Why have they been even introduced in the first place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a good question. So you are right. When I'm thinking back to the first days of Angular, back then it was still called Angular 2, it was released, or not released, it was announced in Paris at NG Europe. Back then, this was the hugest European conference on Angular. And there they told us that they won't implement NG modules. And this was for a good reason, because they told us, hey, the web evolved. We have a new ECMAScript. Back then, it was ECMAScript 2015. And they told us, well, it comes with so many new concepts like classes or modules. And because of the last one, because of TypeScript modules or ECMAScript modules, they decided to not implement NG modules. It would be somehow uh, implementing it twice and confusing people with just another module implementation. And so the idea was to keep it away. However, then they decided to implement it. It was quite late. It was, I think, between RC4 and RC5 when they implemented it. And they did it because they found out the need to have a way for grouping stuff that goes together. Stuff, for instance, like the router outlet and the router link and router link activate. Normally, you need this stuff together. And another reason was they needed a way to define the, the uh, compilation context, which is quite a technical term. But at the end of the day, the compilation context tells the compiler what this very component is allowed to access. I always call it the neighborhood of the component. It's everything the component has in its reach, this subcomponent, this directive, this pipe, for instance. And this is defined by ng modules. An ng module tells the compiler uh, what currently can be accessed by defining imports, by defining declarations. And this was the reason why they implemented it. Perfect. So why does the Angular team want to make them optional? Yeah, so the thing is, somehow they needed them uh, and on the other side, it caused a lot of confusion because, as mentioned, now we have two module systems in Angular. We have 
to deal with imports and exports on a TypeScript level or on an ECMAScript level, and we have to deal with ANSI modules on an Angular level. This is confusing. This calls for code we need to repeat a lot, and it makes everything a bit more heavy. And in order to decrease the learning curve a bit, and in order to make everything a bit more lightweight, now they are trying to get rid of it. And now it's the perfect time because we have Ivy and Ivy makes it easy to get rid of them. Honestly, currently, beyond the covers, after Ivy is done, there are no NG modules anymore. Today, already our compiled code is not using NG modules. And now it's time to bring this feature, this aspect of Ivy, to the public API surface of Angular and this is done with standalone components. How will working without ng modules look like? Yeah, so the thing is that uh, they call it standalone components. And to make a component, a standalone component, you just need to set a flag. The component decorator will have a property called standalone, and you set it to true and, you know, pops your uncle. However, then you somehow need to define the compilation context for this very component. You need to tell the compiler what this component is allowed to access. And for this, the standalone component will have an imports array. It's also part of the component decorator. And in this imports array, you define the neighborhood of the component, everything the component is allowed to access. And it's quite similar with pipes and directive. You know, currently we are talking a lot about standalone components, but we also get standalone pipes and standalone directives. And so we can completely get rid of ng modules if we want. This is the important aspect here. We don't need to get rid of them. They will be there. They will stay around. But if we don't want to work with them, we don't need to work with them anymore. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, but uh, isn't importing the whole context into a standalone component exhausting? Yeah, this is really exhausting. The need to place the whole neighborhood in this imports array. And so we all hope that the Angular language service will give us some way to do auto imports. I mean, currently we have auto imports in TypeScript. The import statements at the top of the files are more or less automatically inserted. And I think we can have the same for uh, standalone components and the compilation context. At least the Angular team mentioned this several times so far. And so I really think they will implement it. But uh, what with, uh, what's with existing source code and libs? Are standalone components compatible? Yeah, this is the best of all of this. It's fully compatible in both sides. It's upwards and backwards compatible. That means That's you amazing. can use standalone components with existing NG modules. You can just import standalone stuff into existing NG modules if you need to extend an existing application, for instance. And you can import ng modules into standalone components. So it works in both directions. And this is really awesome because this allows you to just use it with existing code, but you can also reuse existing libraries. And you know, Angular is not just a framework, Angular is the whole ecosystem. And so it's important that we can use all the libraries out there, even with standalone components. Currently, Angular Router uses ng modules, among others, for lazy loading. How will it work in the future? Yeah, this was one of the big questions we had when they started with this effort of building standalone components. Because, as I say, a lot of libraries, especially the router, uh, are using ng modules. And regarding the router, it will be the case that we can have standalone routing configurations. 
That means we have one routing configuration and this routing configuration can point to other routing configurations directly. We don't need to use a T-tour over an NG module. And when we are referencing another routing configuration, we can also load it laser. In this case, it will only be loaded when we need it. And we can also lazy load standalone components. That means we don't need to have an own routing configuration for lazy loading. It's possible, but we can directly point to this component uh, so that it will get lazy loaded on demand. So what with um, for root and for child methods? Mm. Yeah, so there are two answers. Uh, when we are fine-tuning existing libraries, we can replace those methods with functions. Functions that uh, define several providers, for instance. This will also be the case for the router. For the router, there will be just a function where you pass in the first routing com configuration, the top-level routing configuration, and this function will return some providers you can register when starting the application. And besides this, for cases where you still have modules with for root, for a child, there will be a wrapper function, a function that is wrapping this for root, for a child call, and it will do basically the same. It will return all those uh, providers we can register on startup. Okay. Uh, so without ng modules can uh, how can we structure our angular application in the future this yeah, is the last that's also question a nice question because at first sight somehow this is uh, not possible anymore because ng modules are about structuring an application aren't they exactly so it seems like a contradiction in itself at first glance However, the thing is, there are several additional ways for structuring your application. You could just go with folders. You could just group things that go together in one folder. You could define a barrel for your folders. Or you could use path mappings for those barrels. And the best option, if you ask me, is to go with a monorepo approach. For instance, with an, an X-based monorepo, because then you can define libraries. And libraries in a monorepo, if you ask me, are the better NG modules because they provide real information hiding. They have a public API, and this public API defines what other libraries, other parts of your system are allowed to see and what they aren't allowed to see. That means you can have little tiny secrets. And as I'm always saying in our courses, little tiny secrets are the base for a stable software architecture because everything you can keep a secret can be changed easily afterwards. However, everything you are exposing for other parts of your system cannot be changed that easily because if you change it, if you break it, then you might also break other parts of your huge application. And so I'm really keen into just using libraries without NG modules. It makes everything more lightweight. And it makes everything a bit more stable because of this information hiding aspect, because of this aspect of the public API. Plus, if we think about on an X, then an X also gives us a way to restrict the access between libraries. I can prevent that every library is accessing each and every other library. I can define, hey, this library is only allowed to access that library and so on. And this really enforces loosely coupling. And so a structure you can maintain and you can easily control. So it sounds like a, it's not a revolution, it's evolution for Angular. Yeah, it's really an evolution. I think it's in general the goal of the Angular team to don't come up with breaking changes. For some reason, they didn't make their best experiences with breaking changes. They want to yeah, make an evolution, as you say. The old stuff will work and they give us some new stuff. 
That's perfect. Okay, Manfred, thank you so much for this today's conversation. And we see on the webinar. Cool, looking forward to it.